This is Logan Thompson from Symphony of Heaven, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Brutally Delicious! Hey, you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce Moore. And I'm recently back from being really hungover, Chris Seegers. <laughs> Chris, that was one of my things here. It's glad I'm glad to see you back. I don't know if you needed a uh, an IV of Pedialyte or something. I needed a few. <laughs> yeah, I understand you took Russ's advice uh, too too seriously and spun way too many bottles to make him cool, huh? You have no idea. And and <laughs> and on top of that, I was drinking Canadian beer, so it's strong. And I was just like, holy shit, I haven't done this in forever, man. <laughs> and that's great yeah and then i jumped on a plane here's a f- here's a funny story about last night okay so i'm <laughs> actually this is on my list so go well, ahead no this is a this is separate from the story you think i'm going to tell you oh, okay so i'm flying the worst airline in the world air canada if you ever want to fly with anyone don't fly with them they're terrible but anyways so they're late they're always late like every flight i had was an hour late so I ended up sitting at the bar last night in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and the only beer they had left was Bud Light. I was like, what the fuck? I'm in Canada. So I ordered four, and I just pounded four beers <laughs> before I got, before on, you the got plane, on the plane. Before I got on the plane. Yeah, because I was like, screw this. I'm, I need to sleep, man. It's midnight. We're not going to fly out till one. <laughs> I want to sleep all the way to Toronto. Nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyways... That is my funny story about me. No, no, there's beers. another, there's another funny story that we really need to get to because I saw it on your, <laughs> your Facebook. I need to know about the, uh, okay, the okay. guy you ran into in the restroom. I know that sounds really weird, but <laughs> stay with us. You, stay with us. You're going to like this story. <laughs> so we land in Toronto, which is a crazy airport. Customs is backed up for miles. I just was grilled by U.S. Customs because they they wanted to make sure I was paying taxes, etc. And uh, I was like in no mood for anything. I get through Customs. I go to the washroom. And, you know, I got all my bags. I got everything. I go into the stall. And all of a sudden, I hear this guy walk in. And he's just puking, projectile (laughs) vomiting into the sink. And you can hear He's just like... (laughs) <laughs> and, it, and it was like splash all over the sink and i'm like oh my god what the fuck is going on out there and he's just going like <laughs> <laughs> and then out of nowhere a few stalls down this guy's like i'm really sorry i'm gonna be really loud i have kidney stones <laughs> and, and all of a sudden he's just like I'm crying with laughter and I'm trying not to make fun of these guys because obviously they're in bad shape, right? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know what else to do. I was just laughing so hard. I was crying. And this guy's ralphing in the sink and this other guy's screaming from kidney stones. (laughs) I think the funniest part is though, I walk out of the stall and there's the janitor in the washroom and he's just quietly mopping the floor around the guy that's puking. <laughs> he had his headphones in, not noticing anything's going on. <laughs> that is a great story. Oh, my God. I was like, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> These guys are nuts. That's that's absolutely fabulous. First of all, who's going to travel with kidney stones? <laughs> like, if you have kidney stones, is that the first thing you're going to think of is, Man, I can't wait to get on a plane for eight hours with kidney stones. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was away on business and all of a sudden got kidney stones. Maybe. Is that possible? It's possible, yeah. I mean, but man, oh man, that was just like one of those experiences you'll never forget. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> like the guy puking is one thing, you know, like people get sick, whatever. I get that. But like both happening simultaneously, it was like, the gods of humor came together and were like, Chris, you might be on a shitty airline at a shitty airport being treated terribly, trying to get back home. But in the end, here's a little laugh for you at this these yeah, other guy's that is, expense. That, that's the best story I heard. I started laughing when I saw your post. Oh, dude. Oh, oh, oh. I was crying when I told Amanda when I, or my wife when I landed. I was like, I told her the story and I was just crying with laughter. <laughs> that, that is awesome. Did you get a chance to listen to Cloak? 
My God, dude. I went and saw them last week. They were... We oh, a- yes, I did. They're fucking yeah. amazing. Yes, I did. And I sent it out to every single person I know. My God, that show was phenomenal. They're so tight and so heavy. And it was just... And it mixes everything. It's like death metal and black metal with a little bit of like, you know accepting judas priest in there was so great yep it blew me away when when you sent me that video over i i think i just hit play on their youtube channel i just let it go yeah. and i was just i was hey, this is a cool song and it blasted over to this person and they're i guess they were probably even better live oh my god like i had heard of them but never actually listened to them and then i saw that show and went w- where did they play just this little place by me they opened for a band called chemists where i'd not heard of either but I mean, there was a it was a Wednesday night, but there was a really good turnout. You know, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't the garden or anything. It was a little yeah, club, yeah. but it was a lot of people, a lot of energy. It was it was really really nice. Oh God, I'm jealous. I wish I would have been there to see that. I love seeing new metal bands that I've never heard before that just blow you away live. Yeah, great, and that's why I sent it to you because I figured once you were recovered from your three day hangover, oh, that you know. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's going to be a while. On today's podcast, we've got Logan Thompson from Symphony of Heaven. I don't know if you've checked these guys out yet, but it's some heavy, heavy stuff. Nice. With a really positive message. I like positive messages, and I like metal. So you're going to enjoy this. Yes. We will. We will. We will. Hello. Hello, Logan. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Meet my partner, Chris. How are you doing? Hey, Chris. What's up? Not much. Good to meet you. You too, man. Chris just got back in town uh, yeah. from Canada with, with a pretty good story, I believe. I don't know if you want to <laughs> sure. share it yeah, again for a good it. laugh. Yeah, I want to hear it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> the, the story begins in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada last night. And so the plane is really late. I pound a bunch of beers. I jump on the plane. I sleep my way to Toronto, get off the plane in Toronto, and I go to the bathroom, and I'm like, okay, uh, I got all this stuff. I go into the stall, and as I'm in the stall, I hear this guy walk in, and he starts projectile vomiting into the sink. And you you could hear it just splashing all over. Like, like it it, it was just like... <laughs> and he's doing this he's doing this right it's just going all over the place and i'm like oh my god this is insane <laughs> and i'm still in the stall i can hear what's going on so i'm getting a visual in my brain but i'm not sure i really want to leave yet you know what i mean <laughs> so then all of a sudden this guy is like <laughs> sorry this guy's, this guy's like i'm really sorry I have kidney stones. He screams from a few stalls down from me. And then all of a sudden, he's just like, ah! <laughs> he just lets her. Oh, God. It was. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and I walk out. I, I think the best part of the story is, though, I walk out, and this guy is like hovering over the sink, like just sweating. You know? oh, yeah. The other guy is still sitting in the stall, and there's a janitor. And he's just wiping, <laughs> wiping up the floor around the guy <laughs> with his headphones in, not like, well, whatever. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> man. Just another day. Just another day for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so on that note, Logan, um, let, let, let's get to the point of why we're really here. You guys just, Symphony of Heaven, just finished up uh, a big show over at Audio Feed in Illinois. How did that go? It went swimmingly, if that's the, a good word. It went great, uh, better than I uh, could have imagined. It uh, it was uh, it went really well. Uh, we I don't know how else to say. It just I was extremely happy with it. Um, we got a, a good response. Um, we did some interviews. We sold some merchandise. We got a buzz going. We um, it seemed it. Uh, I know when Symphony of Heaven played, it couldn't have worked out more any perfect. It started raining during the set, which I was praying would happen because I'm like, that's perfect. We're, 
saying we're covered in just dirt and mud and nastiness. And it's like, and then here comes the rain. It's like, oh, Lord, thank you so much. That was perfect. As perfect metal as you can get. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so it went really well, really well. What? Sorry, so, for, forgive me. I'm, I'm kind of new to metal, so and I'm definitely new to living in the U.S. So what's audio feed? You want me to take that, or Bruce, do you want to take that? No, go for I'll, it. We got you on the line. Audio here. feed, uh, this is my second year. Um, if you had ever heard of a festival back in the day called Cornerstone Festival, it kind of grew out of that. Uh, when that thing uh, came to an end, they kept it going in another form through a festival called Audio Feed. It's like three days worth of multiple stages, all different types of bands, um, uh, mostly mostly Christian based, uh, but not necessarily. Um, so it's it's, but it really, in all honesty, it's it's just a big family reunion in the middle of Illinois once a year. And nice. I mean, you get a lot of this. You know, they gave us an opportunity to play. They got bands like Crimson Moonlight to come over. Uh, it, it was just really one of those things where it, it's worth the the trip. I know people have come from all over the world to come to Audio Feed, so it's basically just a three day festival. Of but it, it, the community is so small knit, and everyone knows each other already. So it is more like just a family reunion, and it's just a a blast for three days. You know what I love about that is like, I talk to people that go to, to Vakken every year and they, they tell me that exact same thing, except they don't say it's a small group of people. They say, you know, you, yeah. I just know everyone there or yeah. every metal festival. Heavy Munch Real was like that uh, on the weekend. You know, there's so many. And, and even the boat that we've been on, I mean, the, the number yeah. of times that we've been on, you know, everybody. In fact, that's where I met. That's how we got you. started. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's great. I love the community aspect of it. I, I, I've had so many, I've made so many lifelong friends that I consider like brothers to me now, brothers and sisters. So it's just, they're my type people. They like the same thing I do. And, you know, it's, I don't know how else to describe it other than just family. And it's amazing. That works. Word, you know, it's amazing how moments like that can really calm, calm, like, uh, stressful situations you know yes. like not not even just like stressful like self-stressful but like maybe there's a lot of people suffering through something and they come together like that and those things kind of take it and they fix it you know in, in a really good oh, way absolutely yeah the camaraderie the the coming alongside of each other and just being able to just put your arm around somebody to say i love you let's head bang together you know uh, there's nothing like it it's great absolutely so. absolutely all right, yeah. so Logan, I think what I read, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you not only played in Symphony of Heaven at Audio Feed, but you played with a couple other acts as well, right? Yeah, uh, I played guitar for uh, Tamoritus, which actually David Napier, who and his wife Courtney, are the brain children or child or whatever you would say of <laughs> Tamoritus, and David plays guitar uh, in Symphony. So it, it's kind of what, and then my drummer is also his drummer. So it's kind of like we change masks and change names and swap things around for each band. So that went really well too. I mean, it, it couldn't have gone any better on that either. Um, I know he's had a good, a uh, lot more people looking into him ever since that uh, show and, uh, so uh, it was a lot of fun too. I didn't have to sing, so I could just kind of jump around a lot more. Right, about fell over a few times, you know, which would have been funny. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, have very good balance. I'm figuring that out. <laughs> yeah. And so, it gets worse as you get older. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, so oh, I, I have yeah. a question. Bruce is familiar with this. I'm I'm really not. I'm, like this is really the first time I've heard of Christian metal besides Bruce's movie. <laughs> So how did that all get started for you? Like what, 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 what kind of took you from? Because metal predominantly historically has always been kind of like a anti-culture, anti-religion yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. How did you kind of figure out that you know what I really like this, but I want to turn it into more of a Christian thing? Well, I think it's one of those things that um, when I finally started coming into when I was younger, around middle school years, when I finally started realizing that like. I discovered bands like Corn. Yeah. 
from the older kids that it's just it was cool you know so i was like oh what's this and i was getting a little bit older but then i decided i'd already like you know my mom was a music teacher so i'd always had music in my blood and it's kind of funny the more i look back now she was always into more it wasn't necessarily like classical stuff but it was like for like the 80s and 90s, what would have been considered adult contemporary rock or, yeah. you know, old Michael W. Smith or something like that. So where I was like, oh, I realized that's where I kind of got a liking for drums and guitars. And I didn't even realize it until I got older. But when I finally discovered hard rock and metal, I knew this was I don't know what it was. I just knew this was it. And I remember falling in love with it and have been in love with it ever since and got further and further and further into it especially as i picked up a guitar i wanted to get better so i'd find heavier bands that played faster which led to <laughs> cannibal corpse and then it led to demu borgir and it led to all these bands just on a musical aspect that i that would blow me away so and, and you know i never really was a fan of the lyrics or anything like that so uh but musically i was like you can't beat this this is this is amazing you yeah. know i love it um, and then when, you know, but still being a Christian, so there wasn't, I, at this time when I got into this, I didn't realize there was bands out there in the world that were Christians playing metal and doing it halfway decent. There wasn't a whole lot of them. This was before YouTube and before Facebook. If it wasn't in a magazine, you didn't know about it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So... It was always kind of, I'd always go, and all, as far as I could find was like Demon Hunter, which I like Demon Hunter. I love Demon Hunter. I really do. Um, and so when I got older, really in my, when I hit my 30s, we kind of got settled in our housing situation. I was like, okay, it's time. I've been in bands before. I'm going to start doing this on my own. I don't know of any other musicians, but look, I can do this all from the house. Now I can upload it to Bandcamp. I can make my own metal and be in charge of everything. And so naturally I'm going to just write from my own perspective of life, which is a Christian out um, mindset and viewpoint. Yeah. Um, and then I discovered on Facebook that there was all these people around the world that were connected like, Oh, wait a minute. Like there's bands like a hill to die upon and uh, like, Horde and finding out just stuff like that. Uh, you know, I had heard a little bit of like Schleckbach or Antester, some of the very few bands that I knew about, but all of a sudden you realize there's a whole underground of there's some really good stuff out there and it's not very well known, you know. So it's kind of like finding that hidden gem out in the field that you know, like, oh, this is my own little treasure right here, and you get to share it. And you're kind of in on something, kind of like metal always does. Yeah. You know, everybody kind of feels like it's ours, and like it's kind of like got the, something here, and, almost like the opposite of black metal, where it was like, yes, it started out so small, but it was kind of not very friendly. <laughs> and <laughs> you started out in the same way, but much more friendly. Right. Yeah. And you actually wanted to get to the people where black metal traditionally they want to keep it as on the ground as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think there's a good balance with that, but at the same time, it's like, you know, if I want to, if I want to do things better and I mean, I could always just record everything on a Casio paper, right. you know, and just call it whatever. But I mean, that doesn't always work. It worked for those bands back then because it just did, you know, right. it was one of those things that's going to work for everybody. Plus that's not necessarily exactly what I want to do. Right. Um, I like a good bombastic epic production. Nice. And it takes money. That takes knowing people how to do it or sure. learning it yourself. So yeah, you gotta you gotta get to know people, and you gotta. Music, the way I was, the way I view it now is music is almost kind of like just the medium that we use to make connections with people. Really, honestly, that's all it is. That's wonderfully you know? said. I never heard that, but I like that. that. I just just yeah, about uh, cried with that one right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was taking us all that direction. I apologize. Wow. Let me back up. Metal. Yes, there we go. I use metal to connect with people. <laughs> and I was just really kind of curious on how that all started because, like, usually people in metal are 
like kind of anti-religion and and you're taking it in a different direction which is really pro-religion which is really cool to me that's kind of more metal than metal sometimes like is that because it's against the grain yeah like the first time i went to a metal festival i wore all white and people were like why are you wearing white and i was like (laughs) well i I used to be rebellious to wear black but i'm sitting on a boat full of thousands of people all wearing black it's not rebellious anymore (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a good point that's a very good point <laughs> colonel sanders on seventy thousand tons of metal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, i think you're right though i've said this kind of before because i mean christians in metal christian metal especially in the more extreme genres uh nobody likes us uh the the, the church not maybe historically maybe not so much anymore I, i've never had much of an issue with people i know kind of looking down on me playing metal or anything like that. I was yeah. always, uh, uh, but I know some people have experienced that um, with the church, maybe not being so accepting of it. And then metalheads, especially in the extreme genres of death metal and black metal, really most of the time, you know, just didn't like religion at all. So they, they you can't do this. This is our music. You know, I, and I just kind of look at it like, Wait a minute here. First off, I'm not. I don't care. You can tell me I'm not going to play it. I'm still going to play it. Yeah. So right. get over yourself. And uh, you know, then you get into the more philosophical things like that that I like to look at uh, and stuff. But um, but yeah, it kind of is more metal than metal. That you know, we're so metal we don't even care what metal thinks. We're going to do what we want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we don't care if you like it or not. We're going to do it. And that's why. You know, so that is pretty, pretty metal. That so. is super metal. <laughs> what message or what, what do you want your fans to walk away with after listening to a Symphony of Heaven record or song or seeing you live? Hmm, that's a good question. I want people to walk away thinking, thinking what were, that there's something different about this, that there's something, there's some meaning here. Um, and I know not everybody's going to take everything the same way. Um, you know, from my perspective, I would love it if everybody became a Christian and looked at life in that perspective. I understand not everybody's going to do that. I'm still going to write the way I do. Right. But at the same time, uh, at the, it could also be that people could walk away feeling like somebody's come alongside them and just put their arm around their shoulder and just said, I'm here with you. I've been there. Um, kind of that encouragement, but also looking at realizing the ugliness of life, real, because we've all been there. Letting right. yourself letting yourself feel that and understanding what that means. Um, and also, musically, I want people to feel it. I want to create music that when people listen to it, it paints colors in their mind and it that's the only way I can describe it. Paint use a very colorful sound. Um, generally, maybe looking more with this project, focus more on the darker side of things. Not with the pers- not with the goal to stay there, though. Right. Uh, you can't stay there, but acknowledging that that's real, and then what do you do with it? Uh, from my perspective, that's faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ. I understand not everyone's going to do that. But, you know, um, doesn't mean I can't be a friend to people at sure. the same time. And that's that's what I feel like I'm called to do um, through this is to just help people somehow, however that okay. might be. So Nice. But I will tell you, we get emails from people saying they love this segment of the, uh, the podcast, so. Okay. They usually okay, say well, they I'm ready. I have, I have no idea, so let's go. Yeah, and they usually say they don't like the part where Chris talks, but there's nothing I can do about that. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. They also say they love Gojira. <laughs> yeah, no, let's not even start that. <laughs> and Celsius right. is better than Fahrenheit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Celsius <laughs> is better than Fahrenheit. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you even know what Celsius is, Logan? Can you do the translation really quick? Uh, you add, you take it times two and add 32. No. No. Uh, that, yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Where are you on Gojira? 
Oh, me? Yeah, where are you on I Go love Gojira. Go oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean, come on? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not just some Gojira bandwagon guy. I've been with them since for a long time now. You so know, did Chris just send you a message up. to say that? <laughs> did he just send I, you a message? I, no, I just, I like Gojira. I always have. <laughs> no, I can't get with them. I'm telling whales, you. Flying whales. I mean, come on. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Tell me five things you can do with a pencil other than write with it. Oh, uh, scratch your back. Um, oh, <laughs> erase somebody's makeup. Um, oh, man, this is a tough one. You could break it in half and use it as a toothpick. You could take the lead out and use it for makeup. And uh, then you could take you could take the metal off of the eraser and melt it down and turn it into a Toy or so, I don't know. <laughs> 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 no, solid to effort. In the Patriot. There we go. That was a very solid effort. Chris is right. Thank you for <laughs> playing along. Uh, let's see. You're trapped on a life raft with a nun, an old man, and a baby. Only room for three people on the raft, and you must decide who you throw off. Who are you going to choose and why? I'm going to throw the old man off. Why is that? Uh, because if we're trapped on a life boat, first of all, is the nun good looking? Um, the baby's not going anywhere, so they're not going to eat very much. Um, the old man, I'd have you know, there's only room for one guy on that boat, so it'd have to be he's gone. <laughs> what is your? Can you make a gun noise? What's your favorite go-to gun noise? Oh, oh, that's a, oh, my first one would be. Um, oh, I had it right there. Now I'm not so. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess like boom, like and then boom. All right, what kind of gun would that be, Logan? Uh, I'm not familiar <laughs> with that gun. What what would that be? Um, I think that's like um, maybe I, you know like a oversized shotgun in a cave <laughs> echo, reloading, sounding like a uh, bolt action. There you go. Well, thank you for thank you for bearing with me on my pew, pew. three ridiculous pew, pew. questions. No, that's what the heck is that, that, Chris? It's my Chris gun. has a it's pellet my... gun on there. Pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> Chris, you got anything else? I don't know. All right, so I'm going to give you one more. You're stranded on a deserted island, a desert island, whatever you want to call it. You got three records for the rest of eternity. Assuming you've got a solar powered player, what are they? Oh, first one that came comes to mind is Fear Factory's Obsolete. Great Canadian The next band. album would be Metallica and Justice for All. Another good one. Yeah. Oh man, and then the third one. That's a that's a tricky one. Um, you're gonna think this is really really strange, uh, but it, but I have some backstory to it. Michael if it's W. Gojira, Smith, I'm hanging up. <laughs> Michael W. Smith, Go West, Young Man. Okay. Because, and it's really strange, but it was like my mom used to play that on tape, on cassette tape, when I was really young. That was like the first album I remember. So it's yeah. kind of nostalgic for me. Absolutely. But it's actually got some good, decent, I know, albeit early 90s stuff, but I mean, it's good. So Excellent. That's what I'd pick. Well, that's all I've got. Chris, you're good? I'm all good, man. Thanks for taking the time on such short notice with us. Well, thank um, you for having me, though. Seriously, this was fun. I like it. This is Death to Denomination by Symphony of Heaven off the Body of Christ Split on the Brutally Delicious Podcast.
Nice guy, right? A super nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I was I was shocked. He was like, I was really into corrosion of conformity and Debu Burger, and I was just like, Christian metal? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, we all get there. We all hey. get to metal, man. He was on the fence with Gojira, I think, and then you kind of sent him He a, was a not message. on the fence, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I totally think he was on the fence I'm, listeners will be listening to this and they can tell that logan was totally on the fence and i think you swayed him <laughs> <laughs> i wonder when people are gonna well, i wonder when the uh, all three people that subscribe to us besides you and i are gonna get sick of this stupid banter about gojira right i know we've got we've got dale we've got christina i think tom cardwell he still lives in sewer so there's a few of them out there oh yeah yeah and the battle jacket until next week Keep it metal. Metal. Hello out there. Yes, hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!